Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Fordo and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com. You are listening to The Daily Dog with your host, Michelle Forto. The Daily Dog offers training advice, tips and tricks, and maybe even a book or movie review too. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. This is Michelle, your host of The Daily Dog. I am also the lead trainer of Alaska Dog Works, where we train service, therapy, obedience, and more. Have you heard about the new Adventure Dog Club? This program is launching this summer, in just a few weeks actually, and will incorporate fun things you do with your dog in a way that will enhance your experience. There are cool patches to earn as you go on adventures with your dog, such as hiking, biking, boating, mushing, canine first aid CPR, and many more. Today we're going to talk about the use of voice commands when training your dog. Use consistent dog commands. Once your dog has learned a command, do not vary it. Use it the same way, same tone of voice, same phrase every time you give the command. Don't confuse the dog by saying, come, come, come over here. Come on, boy. Come on, come on, etc. Pay attention to what you're saying and discipline yourself to use the same phrase every time and only one at a time. For example, come on, sit down, stay. Okay, has four requests in it but not one command a dog can understand clearly and follow. Develop a personal dog training vocabulary. Make a dog vocabulary that works for you, one you use consistently to express exactly what you need or mean to say. Oops is a wonderful dog training word because it expresses a gentle reprimand. By its very nature, oops can't sound angry. It implies, nope, try again, rather than the less forgiving, no. You can say oops when your dog executed the wrong command, like lying down instead of sitting, or ignored you. Oops sounds cautionary, but forgiving, especially because when you say it, you are probably going to give the dog another chance to do your bidding. Oops makes you a more forgiving boss, which creates a better learning environment for your dog. Be aware, though, of how you use a word, especially the word down. If down means lie down, then don't use it interchangeably to tell a dog not to jump up on people. Off might work, but only if you don't use it to signal a dog to get off a piece of furniture or get out of a car, which is different. Give your dog a command using a consistent tone of voice. How you say a word, the tone, the inflection at the end of the word must be the same each time for your dog to respond reliably. Change your tone and you alter the meaning of the command. You'll gain control of your voice simply by focusing on it. Here's some quick voice tips for training your dog. Use a sound or a word in a way that helps get the point across. Use short, repeated, energetic sounds to encourage activities such as coming to you. Use one long sound to discourage activity. No. When the dog is starting to do something, forbidden or is in the process of it. Use a long sound to soothe your dog at the vet. Good girl. Develop the habit of drawing out the word good at the very moment your dog complies with the command. It is a vocal reward you can attach to a physical reinforcer. Imagine smiling when you are praising your dog. The pitch of your voice matters in dog training. Use a low-pitched voice to convey authority. When you command your dog using a low voice, he'll respond better. Using a low register tells him you are confident and serious. This is partly because a mother dog growls low and slow to control her pups but lower does not mean louder. Just drop your voice a decibel or two. A voice teacher would say the sound needs to come from your chest, not your throat, which has a piercing higher pitch. 
Women with high-pitched voices can practice sending the voice up from the chest instead of speaking from the upper throat or nasal area. It may sound effective to you at first, but try it at home and get comfortable with a softer pitch. Your voice will sound more pleasant. If the dog ignores your commands to come, remain unemotional about it and say no in a low growly voice. Then say come again in a nice cheery tone. See that what the difference the pitch of your voice can make to the dog and remember this for everyday practice. Let's go through that again. Listen to how I say the word no. No. Listen to how I say the word come. Come. Do you hear a little bit of difference? It's that subtle. Use a higher pitch voice for praise. Men or women with deep voices should practice using a higher voice to encourage their dog, even if they feel silly. When you want to encourage your dog to continue what he is doing, you have to think like a cheerleader. Use a high-pitched, come on, that's a good boy, you can do it. The most effective trainers make their dogs enthusiastic by using a happy, energetic voice and speaking the dog's name with high-pitched enthusiasm. How to avoid common problems when you talk to your dog. Believe it or not, dogs don't speak English, but they process a large cognitive vocabulary if we take the time to talk to them. It's true. Some dogs really can pick up the sense of what we mean a lot of the time. But don't confuse this with understanding language the way humans do. Some people chat a lot to their dogs and get the impression they're being understood. They assume when it's something important they're trying to get across, their dog should know what they mean. In fact, the dog may not respond to what you're asking for because he is confused about what you want. Dogs can get the gist of things we do with them routinely and from the sound of our words and the inflection in our voices, but that does not mean they actually understand our language, especially in unfamiliar situations. Your dog's name is not a command. Remember the phrase, that's my name. Don't wear it out. The one kids in grade school used when someone called their name. Every time you find yourself trying to communicate with your dog by saying nothing more than his name and a variety of inflections. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. Just remember the annoying kid at recess. Our dogs can tune us out if we say their names many times a day in a wide variety of tones of voice. We're all guilty of this at times, but we're wasting our breath because a dog can't read our minds. Wait, what? A dog can't read our minds. Remember that one. Even though there are times when it seems he can. When all you say is the dog's name and you're convinced he still knows exactly what you mean, it's probably because he's picking up and responding to visual clues that you don't even realize you are sending out. Pay attention to your habits and you'll probably notice that you often just call out the dog's name with an up inflection, an annoyed tone, a sharp voice, etc. without a command like come or wait after it. This lack of clarity can increase a nervous or high strung dog's natural anxiety. Another downside to dogs hearing his name over and over for no apparent reason is desensitizing him to his own name. After a while, he might not even react when he hears it. If you persist saying his name without any meaningful command attached, you are using up your dog's attentiveness. The dog will assume you don't know what you want and will ignore you. No is not a dog command. No doesn't mean anything, yet we growl and scream at our dogs. Do you say no over and over, constantly nagging, getting on the dog's case? Is he doing something wrong? He'll feel like he's doing everything wrong, as would you if somebody relentlessly told you no. Remember to praise the good. Praise your dog when he stops a misbehavior. Think of the saying about catching more flies with honey. Dogs have feelings of self-worth and confidence that can be enhanced or diminished by how you communicate with them. It's in your hands. Avoid illogical negative commands. No bark or no pull, are ludicrous things to say to a dog. First, remember, dogs don't speak English. 
much less understand the concept of not doing something, especially when that something is a word they haven't been taught to respond to in the first place. Good sit, said after a dog sits, also means nothing if sit means sit down. Then repeating the word sit with a meaningless noise before it good would be confusing at best. The dog already is sitting. That is what's good. Any further comment with the word sit is a pointless repetition, even in a nice tone of voice. Avoid repeating dog commands. Every dog training manual says not to repeat a command over and over because you'll numb the dog to the words. We repeat ourselves because we don't have the count of three patience to wait for the dog to respond to what we've asked for. Think of this. It's like when you're sitting there clicking the mouse multiple times and then you freeze up your computer because you just can't wait for the icon to open up. The concept of patience is a good one to keep in mind, not only around dogs, but also children, co-workers, and people in the outside world in general. Repeating yourself is a habit you can break by slowing yourself down mentally. Your dog will benefit as much from this as you will. With a dog who already has training but is accustomed to your repeated commands, try the following exercises to retrain yourself to say things only once. 1. Give your dog a tiny treat so he knows what's in your hand. Then issue a command. Two, wait, don't move. Three, count to 30. That's 30 seconds, although it will feel like 30 minutes. Four, say nothing more and don't move. Just wait and watch your dog. Five, if he executes the command, treat him immediately. If he ignores it, turn away and ignore him. He'll be shocked. After all, he's waiting for you to repeat the command over and over rapidly. 6. Try the above sequence again. Your dog will get the program eventually, if not sooner. Don't raise your voice to your dog. If he isn't responding, don't get frustrated. Raising your voice to get a reaction does nothing except raise your own frustration level while rattling the dog. Understanding how dogs communicate dominance. Getting dominance over your dog is a dangerously misunderstood concept. Establishing yourself as pack leader must be undertaken in terms of a dog's understanding. You want the right dominance and submission relationship to exist between you and your dog so he will accept your training requests and social expectations. The points I'm going to go over will illustrate dominance problems that occur between people and dogs. It's best to start training your dog only after you've spent some time researching these behaviors and thoroughly understand them. Here are some signs of dog dominance. Pushing his ball into your lap or hand to be thrown. High ranking dogs initiate play. Pushing his head into your lap or hand to be patted. Leaning against you, the canine way of showing strength. Barking back at you when you give a command. Growling even slightly when touched during chewing, eating, or sleeping. Refusing to release a toy or bone. Mouthing your hand when you brush, toenail clip, leash, or bathe him. Pulling at your clothing. Pushing past you in a doorway. Higher rank goes first. Lying across a doorway. Controlling it. Lying in a hallway watching human activities guarding territory. All of those signs of dominance are typically the number one reasons why people contact me for dog training assistance. So do yourself a favor, do a little bit of research on these, and then give me a call so that we can help you work it out. I appreciate you listening to our show today, The Daily Dog, and check us out on our social media sites. From Dog Works Radio, this is The Daily Dog. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your host is Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto, created for Dog Works Radio. 